So um, what we're going to be doing here is resealing the Vanos system. So using the Vanos tool we are moving the center shaft to ensure that it is in the most clockwise direction. Um, and then using an indelible marker is marking the center shaft relative to the Vanos body. Um, as can be seen here I have already done this previously on this one. I was just remarking it to make sure that it was still still visible. There we go. Uh, what we do now is, is lift the center shaft out. As you lift it up it does rotate around ever so slightly. And there is a sort of a, an emulsion-y, oily mess on there. I use a degreaser that is uh, rinsed up in water, so I degrease the, um, the Vanos gear set um, and then rinsed it within water, which is why you're seeing the, the emulsion um, there. There's nothing wrong with the car, it's just, it's just water um, from the emulsion. Lots of furious cleaning. I go through quite a lot of rags and, and tissues and stuff throughout uh, through cleaning and stuff. Um, but uh, as they say, cleanliness is next to godliness when it comes to hydraulic equipment and things that, that use seals and, and the like. So you can't uh, can't overclean. Just getting down in between the the Vanos piston, which is that centre shaft with the helical gear. You can see there, that's the Vanos piston there. Um, so I'm just getting a wedge of tissue down in the gap, ready to uh, sort of get a, as much of the gunk and stuff out from, from underneath where the uh, piston sits. Um, readiness to, to remove the, the Teflon seal and the O-ring that sits underneath the, there in the seal cavity underneath the uh, the black plastic ring that you can see. turning the mic on and off so I do apologize if there's a, a bit of a thump in between. Right so what we're doing here is there is a there is a, a steel washer that sits on the Vanos shaft there and um, sometimes it comes out when you pull the Vanos shaft out and sometimes it sits within that center piston there um, but this one was stuck onto the center shaft so I've just popped it out using a pick just giving it a quick wipe on the cloth and what we'll do with this is we'll sit this in the, uh, in, in the Vanos center piston. Um, this is when I realise that my camera is probably going to be a little bit too low, so I'm just adjusting the camera at the moment. There we go, that's a bit better. 
matter. Um, so yeah, so we're just cleaning that washer up, um, and what we're going to use this is we're going to push that centre piston down, uh, and then fit this washer where it's uh, where it's supposed to be in that centre piston, and then this actually creates a, a great little handle to hold onto. Um, but you can, that's it. So like that, you can pull the piston up and hold onto it while you're rootling around in there, trying to get the Teflon ring and the O-ring out. So just cleaning up the central shaft again. Now that the wash has been taken out, just cleaning it up. And remarking the line, just to just, uh, make sure that it's still visible. Because even though it is a, a Sharpie, it's an indelible marker. Uh, you know, it can still rub off, so it's just it's just best to make sure that you get the uh, the two the, the marks kept there. So using a, a hook pick, um, lifting the the central vanos piston up, um, that creates a, a little gap between the central piston and the plastic uh, housing there, and you can hook the uh, the Teflon seal like that. So just hook it up. And then using another pick just to help just pull the, the seal out of the cavity there and just lift it out of the out of that little gap there so this is the Teflon ring this is the one that seals against the central shaft um, this is the one that wears out this is the, the important one this is the one that wears and, and creates a pressure loss within the Vanos system, and it doesn't uh, doesn't do its Vanos adjustment properly, and then it starts rattling and, and ticking around. So that's the Teflon seal out. And next up is there's an O-ring that sits underneath that black plastic housing as well. So lifting up the the central piston again, which is the uh, the centre part with the helical gear. Now this, uh, according to the BSAN website, does require a lot of force to to get out. It's, uh, it's a little gap that you've got to try and get this O-ring out of, uh, and after many years sitting in an oily environment, O-rings can swell. Um, and it's, uh, it's a little tight to get the O-ring out. So yeah, BSAN do say use know a little bit of obviously don't go nuts on it and use screwdrivers and lever it out you'll, you'll crack the, the plastic housing um, on the Vanos but uh, using a, a good bit of English um, you can lever it out after a few minutes of me trying to get this this o-ring out of this one um, I did get annoyed and just sort of snapped the o-ring in two cut the o-ring in two using the pick and then just pulled it out like a piece of string the other side I did, which is the one down on the right hand side by my watch. Um, I managed to get that one out of the, the other Vanos unit in, in one piece, but this one was being a little uh, was being a little bit tight. So uh, you'll see very shortly I, I lose my rag and just go right, that's it, just and just tear it out. Um, I do try to get it out in in one piece. I mean there's no there's no need to get it out in one piece because you'll be replacing this this o-ring um, with the uh, with the seal kit in any case so it doesn't have to be in one piece it's just that uh, you know, it's always nice to do so you can see furiously working with the picks there trying to drag it out but it's not having it it's it's, it's well and truly sort of swollen um, I'm wedged in there, so I, I get a bit fed up in a minute and just, uh, and just just break the O-ring. There we go. There we go. And just tear the O-ring in half, grab one end of it, and then just pop it out like a piece of string. There we go. Yeah, so I did manage to get the other one out in, in one piece. That's that's the broken O-ring there. Uh, 
and that's the one I managed to get out the other day. This is it sitting actually in the Teflon. So that's the one that I got out in one piece. And that's the uh, the Teflon O-ring. Uh, or the Teflon ring there. That one that one I, I managed to break. But anyway, it's out. That's the important bit. Right now, more sort of dabbing down in there with, with more tissue and more cloth to sort of... Um, clean up the, the seal cavity that the, the O-ring and the Teflon ring sit in. seal cavity down there of, of any sort of dirty oil and everything. And just making sure that it's all clean for when we reseat the new O-ring. Now I didn't want to edit this video down in, you know, sort of just do it in little chunks of, oh, this is me getting an O-ring, this is me doing this. I thought I'd do the whole video um, from start to finish of the whole thing, including all the cleaning and all the, you know, the boring stuff and even and getting a, a, a quick drink very shortly as well. Um, just so you can see the whole process from beginning to end, totally unedited. Um, I know it doesn't make, you know, it's not exactly riveting viewing. Um, I'm fairly sure that, you know, there's 45 minutes, 50 minutes of other stuff that you could be doing, but obviously if you are a, an avid DIYer, um, and like me, I, I like to watch videos of, of, of the process before I attempt to do it, just to make sure that, you know, fair enough, it, you can read the process and look at it, and I'm, look, so you know, see a, a short and edited video and parts of it, um, but they, there are other steps that some people do sort of miss out on. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd do the whole the whole process uh, and not not skip anything out. Obviously, after we've done put the seals in here, we do go down into the garage to, to press the um, the lip back down again. Um, but obviously, that that that, that you know, we we do cut the video there, but because in essence it's uh, it's it's one whole process. So that's the uh, that's the housing cleaned and sort of wiped down. So I'm just getting a a, a a quick drink of of, of coke. Then just a, a bit of fizz. All right, this is uh, the B Sam O-ring and Teflon seal kit. Um, they do recommend getting a spare Teflon ring, and, and I highly recommend that. I, I have, I did damage the one on the driver's side, which is why, just on the right-hand side of the screen there, you can see the the driver's side is still in in, in bits because um, I did damage the Teflon seal. So I'm going to reseal that one very so shortly. Right, using some assembly lube. Um, they always say you should never fit O-rings dry because there is a, a chance of snagging them. Um, in this case, uh, it's not 100%. It's, it's not totally necessary to, to lube the O-ring before you fit. Um, but it, it's just, you know, uh, I've always found it to be good engineering practice uh, to lube O-rings before you fit them just in case they do snag on something. They, you know, it gives them a, a better chance of... of Survival, should we say? So, we place the O ring 
over the top make sure that the center piston is, is lifted up and it's just a case of just gently massaging the seal and going down into the gap between the center vanos piston underneath the helical gear and then just pushing it down very gently using the the blunt end the blunt corner of of the pick and just pushing it down between the plastic housing and the the helical gear of the vanos piston uh, and getting it down into the seal cavity now the o-ring um, doesn't actually do any sealing within itself it, it, it does, that's not actually what acts as the seal that the, the o-ring acts as a support uh, ring for the teflon ring the teflon ring has got a um, a concave groove on the on its outer circumference um, that the o-ring sits in as you can see there on the right hand side you've got the green old green teflon ring sitting within the o-ring so the o-ring sits under the plastic housing so that, that's what you're doing there you're just sort of poking it under the plastic housing just gently just pushing it down don't rush it man. one thing that, that, that i will say about doing this procedure is don't rush it don't try and give yourself a any time pressure just take your time just just get it in there make sure the o-ring is sitting in that seal cavity uh, correctly um, so yes we're just gently pushing it down underneath the, uh, the the plastic ring now making sure it's seated in there properly uh, just gently just using the the 90 degree pick there just to sort of just just use it to, to push it into the seal cavity as best you can. just a matter of popping that end in that's it now it's all it's all seated under there it's a matter of just going around and just making sure that that o-ring is is seated correctly into the cavity that uh, technically when, when it's in there you you shouldn't be able to see the o-ring in effect it should sit quite nicely under that plastic housing uh, and you're just lifting the, the center piston back up again making sure that's all in there properly. Another quick wipe of the hands because I do have that sort of assembly lube on there. It's a, a Lucas assembly lube is, is very sticky. It's very very slippery. It's like it's, it's a, it, uh, they use it for breaking in engines when you fit it in new camshafts or new bearing shells or anything. You don't want to run them dry. So you put a this this assembly lube in and it's a very sticky uh, lubricant. Um, it's very good under high pressure. Uh, situations such as um, cam bearings and, and crankshaft shells that sort of thing right now quick quick pause there because I wanted to get a cup of, of hot water um, I'm just going to drop the Teflon seal into the cup of hot water uh, and this warms it up. This makes it a little bit, little bit softer. So it's not quite Teflon seals that they, they they can be quite brittle when they're cold. Um, so you want to make sure it's nice and warm. Um, it doesn't make it bendy and flexible because uh, you don't want it that warm. Um, so you don't want to distort it. Right. So I'm just pausing the camera there. It's been in there for about two or three minutes now, so it's nice and warmed up. Just hooking it out. So yeah. So you don't want it hot hot so that it's all flexible and it distorts and everything else you want it warm so that it's you know it's it's pliable's and also not the right word but anyway it's it's best to put it in a cup of water, of hot water for two or three minutes just to just to warm the seal up right it's just giving it a quick dry on another bit of tape and now this is the very delicate part this is the part that you don't want to rush because uh, as i say i i I managed to damage the Teflon seal on the driver's side. Um, literally, I got it all in, and it was the very last millimeter. I'd got it under the plastic housing, and I was just making sure that it was fully seated under the plastic housing, and there was no gap. And I, I managed to just nick 
the, uh, the 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 edge of the Teflon seal and tear it slightly. Well, I was absolutely gutted because you don't want to rush this. So you pop it down and you push it down um, using the using the pick. Just just you gently just massage it down under the plastic ring, uh, and then it sits. As I say, the O-ring sits is. is keeps the Teflon ring in place so it's a, it acts as a support so you want to get the Teflon ring under the plastic housing sitting on top of the uh, the o-ring so you just gently just every every now and then just rotate it around just poke it down under the under there just then make sure it's seating correctly and then push another bit under the ring and then make sure that bit's seated correctly and then push another bit under uh, it's it's very difficult to explain, uh, and the Bsan website um, gives a very very good write up and procedure, with loads of photographs of this this whole procedure, and I I heartily recommend that you read it and read it and read it over and over again. Look at the photographs, zoom in on the photographs, see what uh, see what's about. They they even have cut out. Uh, models of the Vanos systems where they've taken one of the Vanos units and they've actually cut it and so you can actually see how it's all fitted together um, and it's, it's very good but yeah so you don't want to rush this you want to get this one right um, the, the space that you've got to work in is very small so you, you want to sort of I, I think I, I think it took me um, probably about 10 minutes to get the uh, to get the Teflon seal into place because I didn't want to ruin it. I didn't want to break it. I didn't want to break another one. I only I only <laughs> I only bought one spare and I didn't want to didn't want to wreck that and then have to wait to buy another 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 seal. But anyway, just gently just keep putting it in piece by piece, don't force it all in at once, just do one little bit at a time and then make sure it's seated correctly and then do another bit at a time. So just gently pushing it, just gently massaging it, you can see there just that last little bit. So you don't want to force it all in and go, oh I've just got this bit, I'll just push this whole bit in. Now just wait and wait until you've got the rest of it seated. Keep checking it. That's it. And then pop. I think uh, I've got my finger in the way. I can't see where I am. No, I've still, I've still got that little bit left. I'm just making sure that the rest of it's all seated first. little bit there. I don't want to rush it because this is where I managed to this is where I managed to uh, damage the, the other one. I rushed getting that last bit in. I was like, oh I'm so close I'll just pop that in now and then sort out the rest of it. Nope. Make sure that all of it is sitting correctly on that O-ring. It's sitting in that groove absolutely correctly. Now this is the last little bit. Just pop it in. Just massaging it in with the blunt end of the pick, and then just using my finger just to stop it from popping out, and just making sure that it is sitting in there. That's it. Having a quick look around, then using the 90 degree pick, um, because once it goes in, it, it's got a little sort of kink in it, a little wave in it, because obviously you, you've had to kink the the, the Teflon ring um, to get it in that little gap there. So with that little wave you just want to use the Teflon pick now to sort of just massage it and gently just work it around and take that kink out and work it about a little um, being nice and gentle with it and getting it all seated and making sure that it's sitting exactly where that uh, where that o-ring is and the o-ring is sitting in the Teflon groove correctly as I say, it's, it's very difficult to talk about it without actually 
seeing it. Once you get all the kit and you, you see how the O-ring and the Teflon ring sit on each other and then when you sort of get your Vanos unit out and you can see how it all sort of sits there then you'll be able to uh, be able to see it. Just having a quick check to make sure that it's all, all there using the end of the pick just to make sure that it's sitting in the right place under that plastic edge just just using the edge of that pick just to flatten out any any kinks in that teflon seal because obviously what the, the the central shaft the vanos shaft then sits in there and you've got to get that van that central shaft past that teflon seal so you don't want it to be kinky kinked or or, or uh, in any way as if it's going to bind up on on that as you try and press that centre shaft back through that that centre seal. So, quick wipe of the hands, quick, quick little wipe around. Get any of that assembly move off that was sort of sitting there, but it won't do any harm actually. It's sitting there. Right? Have a quick look. I don't know how well this is going to come out. No, don't. No, you might be able to see it, but you can see there that there's no kinky waviness or, or anything of the Teflon seal and it's that, that's not a very good picture Anthony what were you trying to try and show there but anyway it's in just having a closer look myself making sure just just having another quick check you don't want to rush this you don't want to get this wrong because the, the Teflon seal can be easily damaged at the next bit, which is when you press the center shaft in. So have another look. You can see just just about make out the Teflon seal sitting under that plastic, that black plastic ring, sitting under there, sitting in the in the cavity. There's no waviness, the, the Teflon ring hasn't popped out at all. Just checking, double checking, triple checking, looking at the one that I did manage to damage just to have a look at the damage and just, you know, just saying how did I manage to get this one done reasonably well and that that other one I managed to screw up so badly. But anyhow. Alright, just a quick comfort break there before I do the Not the heart-stopping moment, but the moment where you could uh, could potentially damage the Teflon ring. So using some more assembly lube. Uh, again, you you don't want to force anything past a a dry seal. You want to put some sort of lubricant there because you don't want to don't want it to snag up and and tear. So just smearing some more assembly lube over it just to give it some some good lubricant as I press the shaft in. So when the when you go to put the shaft in it does rotate because it does sit on that central helical gear of the, of the Vanos piston there. Um, so as you put it in it does rotate ever so slightly. I think it rotates to the left. So you want to put no you want to put the mark slightly to the left of your original mark because when you push it down it'll rotate back into line again. I've got it a little far, too far out. You go pop as it just goes past the seal there. There we go. And I think I've got that slightly misaligned. So I think yes. Now I've popped it back. I pop it back out again. Come back a gear tooth. And then as I push it in, just rotate. Just make sure it's seated properly. Make sure it's back in line. There we go. Because uh, as I said at the start of the video, the Vanos body and that centre shaft is is balanced there we go you can feel it's nice and tight now I'm trying to rotate that that center shaft it's nice and nice and tight part of the, the problem with the vanos system is it does rattle around so if it isn't tight it sort of tends to chatter about so it's nice and tight now with that vanos seal now this is the press where that black plastic ring is um that sits underneath the lip of the van the metal vanos body um 
you what you want to do is compress that lip down um, again so we're taking the center shaft out um, we've made sure it fits with putting the center shaft in sort of presses the the Teflon seal over to one side so this is the the press and this compresses the the, the lip back down onto that black plastic ring now there are three pegs there uh, on the black plastic ring so I'm using those I'm just using the end of the nut you can you know, use, use something that's a little bit more probably akin to, to, to what it's doing there it's just knocking them in just to bend them in just that absolute fraction so that those pins sit through those three holes in that um, press there so it's a nice tight fit it's it's very well machined very well engineered by DSAN um, so it's a very nice fit so it does take a little bit of a force just to pop it in so just pop the washer on and just nip it up um, I'm not going to nip it up at the moment because I'm just putting it together so I can take it down to the garage and put it in the in the vise so yeah so literally just do that there we go job done and then it's ready to go down in the vise so what we do is we'll, we'll transition down into in, into the garage I'll meet you down there it's a bit of a mess do excuse the mess in the garage so this is this is my very old vice that I, I, I forgot this. I can't remember I've got this vice from Blimey, I've had it for ages. It's a big heavy heavy duty vice. But the 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 uh, the thread on the on the handle is uh, a little as you'll see in a minute when I try and open it up, it doesn't quite open up enough. So I, it will it would open up enough if the th thread on the was good enough. So I have to tap it open. But anyway, right. So uh, press tool goes in. Do we reset? We shot at the back of the head. See, vice is the uh, the thread isn't working. So grab the hammer and. Uh, Vice open a little bit further. Literally just a millimeter it was all it needed. Mum. There we go. So seat back on the vice, do the vice up super tight. Um I cannot overemphasize. <laughs> Um, how tight that centre you'll, you'll be, how tight you will be doing up that centre bit. So, bit, of a, bit of a cheetah bar on there. Just give it a quick nip, make sure it's uh, quite tight. Put it one side. Right, so, bolt out. Um, you always do when you're talking when you're using a press like this to torque it down you always lubricate the bolt so again a little bit of assembly lube um, because it's uh, a, a good lubricant to use in high pressure applications um, it makes a perfect lubricant for lubricating high torque bolts in, in presses and that sort of thing because it will withstand immense amounts of pressure so I've also put some lube under the washer head the, the the flanged head of that nut as well because obviously um, torque is a function of um, well, torque it's, it's it's rotation so if you've got um, any friction between the bolt and that large pressed washer there then you're not getting an accurate torque reading because you're you're measuring the friction rather than the actual torque applied to the bolt to, to clamp two pieces together. So, one thing I've forgotten to do, so I'm just taking the bolt and, and everything else out, and then taking the vanosh unit out, is to grease the um, the lip of that vanosh, because you're using it to, to compress that metal lip, again you can get friction against, uh, between that um, cup there which has actually got a preformed shape within it that will reshape that 
Vanos lip. So I'm just putting a putting some some lube on that lip there, so that when it fits into the die in, into that former that cup, that it um, doesn't bind up and and it rotates nicely. Now I've just had the cat jump on the computer, so excuse me. There we go. Right. So yeah, so I'm putting it back in, realigning the pins. Realigning the pins with those holes. Pushing it in. It is, as I say, it is a nice firm fit. It's a very well machined tool. Fits absolutely perfectly. So, and press washer and bolt back in that, that have been pre-lubed. So, wind that in. Right, now, what we do now is we mark the washer position relative to the Vanos unit position. Um, this is purely because if you have to do another a, a press once again, then you can get the, the press washer in exactly the same place. Obviously, they're machined very well, um, but... You know, there there are going to be minor discrepancies in in, in machining. So, if one because of the amount of force you're having to put into this, um, you you need to mark the washer position, the press washer position, the balance position to ensure that it's in exactly the same place the next time you, if you have to do a second press. So this then gets um, the initial torque is done to 136 newton meters, if I remember rightly. Check the website; that I could be right. I think it's 136 newton meters. Um, so trusty torque wrench, 27 millimeter socket. Um, just setting it to 136. Doing up there. The lock, popping it in, and then ratcheting it down. Just checking, um, just checking to see if the washer has has moved as I was talking it down. So I thought, wow, what I'll do at this this point then is uh, um, remark the position because I haven't talked it all the way down. Um, what I will do is, is I'll just use this opportunity now just to remark its position uh, before I do the, the talk. Take your hand off Anthony just to check the talk. Clicky clicky. Now unfortunately my workbench that my Vice is uh, attached to is on wheels, so it is a movable workbench so I can move it around and move it around, which is great, it's fantastic. Right up until you have to, to put, put to do something up to a, an immense amount of torque. Now I made a mistake here. Technically, I didn't. I didn't. I marked the socket because the, the next part of the torque process is to do an entire full turn of that nut uh, of the bolt. Sorry. Um, and what I did was I marked the socket to the washer, and then did my f did did about a uh, a flat a, about a sixth of a turn, and then took the socket off, and then realised that I hadn't got in the right place, placing the, the bench against the leg. Um, so yeah, so I did did that first sort of sixth of a turn, and then took the socket off, and then looked and, and went, all right, let's put it back on again, and then realised that I put it put the socket 180 degrees out of place so a uh, quick chain oh, flip it around 180 degrees back put it against that there we go right now we're in the right place Anthony you total donut again holding the bench and this is a this is a, a, a three no this is a four foot bar um, and now you can see there that the the vice wasn't quite done up enough and I used a, a sort of a four foot bar on there. That water that's coming out, that, that's still part of the um, the, the, uh, the degreaser that I'd used and stuff. It's being forced out as we're pressing. 
So, turn the cheetah bar back on the on the vice a bit. You know, a good old doing up there. And then putting it on this side as well. Try not to knock the camera over while I'm doing it. Putting it on there and then just give it a good old heave ho. As I say, that's me leaning on that, that four foot bar there. No, sorry, three foot bar. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't understand, under, under, understate just how tight that bar had to be. Um, as I say, I, I, I'm a big lad, I weigh. Um, just over, well, just under now, thankfully, just under 24 stone. Um, so I'm a big lad. I'm I'm six foot three. I I weigh just under 24 stone, and I'm putting as as you will see, it doesn't help. If if the bench was fixed, I wouldn't have as much issue trying to do it as as I did. But still, trying to do that bolt up another full turn. Um, was, was 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 hard going, and as you'll see, that you know, I, I do put a bit of shoulder in there, brace the bar up against, uh, put your bum like a bit of a bend and push. Not the best working condition, I have to admit, is having that bench that moves because of how much the, you know, that steel deck of that bench flexes. As I'm trying to do that bolt up as tight as it is. So we're getting close to that final part of the turn. Look at the bar bending there. Just seeing how much further I've got to go. Not far to go now, so I sort of brace myself up against there. Put my shoulder up against the bar. Look at the bar bending there. That is a that is a, a high quality three foot breaker bar. It's not a Mickey Mouse one. Come on. As I say, you know, it's just... If the bench didn't move, I don't think I'd have quite as much of an issue as I did. Just that last little... tweak. Come on. There we go. <coughs> have a quick look. Huffy puff. Job done. It's a matter of doing the bolt, and that, that should be pretty much done. Now, one thing I don't think I've put in the video is, is the next bit of checking. Why I thought after doing it up with a three foot breaker bar, I could undo it with an 18 inch torque wrench, I don't know. So, anyway, back to the breaker bar so we can undo it. Hip against the bench, and pull. There she goes. Threads, etc. Um, right, so 
next part is you've got to then those press and the, the cup and that are quite well attached now. So cheek the bar back on the, on the vice. You can see how tight I had to make the vice. You can see the depth of the steel bolt flexing. So just a quick check. So they're, they're quite well pressed on there. You saw the amount of uh, effort it took. So bolt back in and we just sort of nip it up a few threads and then tap 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 using it as a, a, a sort of a makeshift drift tap that cup off the back of the Vamos there take the, the cup off have a quick check everything looks good take the bolt out so it's me checking it in the daylight And then quick clean up again. Now I can't remember if I put this in the video or not, but uh, the idea now is to get uh, your thinnest feeler gauge and check to see if there's a gap between the lip of the vanish and the, and the, and the black plastic. Precariously balance the Vanos on the edge of the vice entity. Brilliant idea. Great. Just out of shot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess you can tell I, I, I would never be a cameraman. But yeah, just checking to see if I can get my thinnest feeler gauge under that lip there, um, which I can't, which means that it's, uh, it's sealed now quite nicely up against the, uh, the plastic housing, which is how it should be. And then I've got to get that washer off the back, so I grab a... Nope, my drift isn't on, my drift is in that floor. So I get a, a metal drift. And this is a good thing about being slightly portly, is you've got a nice little shelf to, to tap things against. <laughs> That's a really bad way to put it. There we go. But, you know, you know it's like in the world of strong men. Mass moves mass. So yeah, so knock the washer off just to quick check to make sure that everything looks tickety-boo. Uh, looking good. That lip is pressed nicely onto the, uh, onto the black plastic uh, part there. So now it's a matter of just dropping that centre shaft back in place. Press it in nice and firm. Again, it's all out of shot. Very great hands, you know, especially in an instructional video and you're not even pushing it in the right place. But there we go. So that is now pressed in place. Just putting the, uh, the Vanos tool back on top. And then again, out of shot, just, just rotating the centre shaft to make sure that it's nice and tight in there. Uh, and that is the Vanos unit resealed with a new O-ring, new Teflon ring. The Vanos lip has been pressed down using the Vanos press tool. Um, and then that's ready to be refitted back onto the car. Just a quick clean up of all the, all the components and that is... Um, Ready for pressing the, uh, the the next the next unit once uh, once I refit the Teflon seal that um, I'm stupidly damaged. So anyway, I hope that hope you've enjoyed that. Well, enjoyed it's 50 minutes long. Much you can enjoy it with me waffling on in the background. 
um, but uh, hopefully that will give you an idea of the requirements to reseal the M62 um, Thanos on the uh, the M62 V8, be it um, one of the the, the seven the uh, the seven series, five series, or the X5 or whatever, um, using the M62 engine um, and you'll be sealing your vanos. Anyway, I hope it's been informative for you. Uh, and uh, if you do decide to do the job, best of luck. Take your time. Order an extra Teflon seal um, and don't rush it. Give yourself plenty of time to do it. You don't want to damage those Teflon seals. Um, all the best and uh, I'll see you on the next video.